How many of us have gone on diets where we have the mentality of what we went through the last time? Well, this is going to fail, so I might as well give up before I start. And we wonder why keto didn't work. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, another one is you struggle with perfectionism. That's me. That's yeah. me. I'm talking to myself. You struggle with perfectionism, this idea that you must be perfect and show up perfect in your life. Yeah, that's that's definitely something that has to be reparented. And lastly, um, it, it kind of goes back to what I was saying um, when you unknowingly self-sabotage. And again, I don't like the word self-sabotage. You're really just trying to protect yourself. And that goes into the diet of this is something that you're not used to. Your body is not used to. Your mindset is not used to. And so it feels like an attack, even though it may be a growth thing. It feels like an attack. And so and it's pushing you outside of your comfort zone. And that, that feels like, oh, I got to protect myself. And so sabotage is not actually sabotaging yourself. It's you're protecting yourself. And so any of those things that's a pattern in your life, you need to be reparenting. You need to go through this process of reparenting yourself. And I think if you go one step deeper, which is what we do on this show, it is the namesake of the show, you have to ask yourself, how did you get to the point where you want to sabotage yourself? Because on a conscious level, none of us want to, but we do anyway. What the heck? Yeah, it's a pattern. It's it's something that we learn and developed as a child. So for me, when I was in a stressful state as a child, I ate. I learned to self-soothe because I didn't have a I didn't have a go to. I didn't have a parent. I didn't have an adult. I didn't have anybody in my life who was so grounded that I could go to them and say, listen, I'm having all of these feelings. I don't know what the fuck to do with them. Can you please help me sort through these feelings? And so as a child, I learned the coping mechanism of food to cope with my own problems. And I also saw this repeated in the Southern church where, oh, you know, we're getting together. We must eat for everything that we ever do. Everything must be centered around food. And so I taught that to myself. Happy equals food. Sad equals food. Stress equals food. If you don't have casseroles galore at a, at a Southern Baptist church in the South, you ain't lived yet because you got to have a little scoop of every casserole anyway yeah we're, we're telling on ourselves about southern culture <laughs> oh gosh southern culture oh my but, goodness but i i'll be more <laughs> my dad owned restaurants when i was growing up so getting the abuse and needing an escape he had this place called the buffet house yeah. in <laughs> so i'd come home from school and he'd start yelling at me first thing i'd want to do is run to the buffet and just pile on the food and and it just became this habit it became this self sabotage to the point that when i went off to college what did jimmy do i'd order a whole pizza and i would eat the whole damn thing wouldn't even think twice about it i would go down to the to the donut shop at three o'clock in the morning when the hot and ready sign was on and i would just get a dozen donuts and just stuff them down my throat didn't even think about it like did i consciously want to do that no i was soothing myself, but it was because it had become such a part of my psyche that I needed those things to soothe that I didn't know how to break it. Yeah, absolutely. That, yeah, I did the same thing. And when I noticed that pattern in myself, that's when I started going down this journey. When I started keto and I started losing weight, you know, I just thought, oh, I'm going to get skinny and all my problems are going to be fixed. No, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. I got to the end of my journey and I had been so hyper focused on losing this outside weight yes. that I forgot that, oh, maybe we need to lose the emotional weight that got you here to begin with. Yeah, over on Clubhouse, they talk about that quite a bit in the Keto for the Soul Clubhouse because people emotionally they don't change. Yes, you physically change, but those those tendencies to want to eat. The addiction pattern can be calmed a little bit physically, but then if you don't learn to reparent the way you eat, so to speak, uh, because quite frankly, most of our parents didn't tell us how to eat well, uh, and so we have to kind of reparent ourselves in that way. That's what leads us to keto or whatever we decide to do. Um, You kind of go down that path. It's it's an easy path because it's a familiar path. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I think that's, you know, we're talking about food in particular, but a lot of people reparent 
themselves in a negative way. Um, and mm, I think that goes more, it would be more sabotage rather than parenting. Um, people get into, all right, a lot of people say, oh, marijuana is the gateway drug. Um, no, ma'am. Um, trauma is the gateway drug. Yes. Trauma in your life, not having the people that were supposed to be there for you lead to this. You need to numb. And so you and I, we chose food to numb. And yes. in in our society, in our culture, that's just an accepted form of drugs. Yes, it is. It's an accepted form of drug use to overindulge on all the things that are negatively affecting our body. But People get into drugs and alcohol or they get into overworking. I love you, Jimmy. They get into these patterns that are self-sabotaging or they're just this protection mechanism that we have developed, but it's not healthy. And, and yes, we can talk about food, drugs, alcohol, but it shows up in so many other areas of, you know, you grew up in a family household where there was always yelling, there was always screaming, and now you've gotten married and you don't know how to have a relationship without having screaming and yelling within your household. And you think if there's not screaming and yelling, there's something wrong. Yes. Yeah. You you uh, told me a story about a family member that was that way or a friend or something about a month ago. You told me this story where they didn't know how to handle it when they got out of an abusive house where screaming was the norm. And suddenly they're in the real world and they're like, wait, it's, it, it's peaceful. What's wrong? And so their like sympathetic nervous system kicks in big time. Whereas you would think their whole life, they've been waiting for calm and they finally get it and they're not at peace. It's weird. They're not at peace. And so they subconsciously create yeah, yeah. this chaos so that they can feel comfortable. So for an outsider, they're like, what the hell are you doing? Right. But for them, they're only creating this inner peace because they have yet to repair it themselves and understand that's not a healthy pattern that we should be repeating here. Man, how many kids get out of like those kind of households? And then, you know, if it's a girl, they go meet some cute guy and it's wonderful. And during the honeymoon kind of period, first year or two, everything's fine. And then suddenly, ah! and it's like, what the hell is that? Like, what, what? And it, it's where a lot of strife goes in. It's why I think kids that are in those situations, there needs to be some kind of a program set up that helps them cope with what normal life is. And I dealt with that. I went off to college, yeah. but I had culture shock galore. I was so sheltered. Um, I didn't know anything about anything, but I learned real quick about what stuff was. And I, I was, that's normal. Like I was told the opposite was normal. It's just, man. And that messes with you mentally, which then this reparenting takes on a whole nother level of healing that needs to take place. Yes. I think a big first step in reparenting <clears throat> was self-awareness, self-reflection and self-awareness to realize and see one of my favorite people on TikTok, and his name escaped me. I know you know who I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, he does these bits where he steps outside of himself and he's doing this inner work of he's letting this side of himself freak out and be emotional, being upset. And, and then he just kind of comes out of his body. He's just sitting back and watching. And they're like, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, I'm just observing. I'm just you go ahead and do what you're going to do. I'm just observing. And so to get to that point where we're observing our reactions and the way to really start this process of reparenting is think of the things that trigger you. That's the easiest place to start. If someone says a certain thing and you feel a certain emotion, instead of immediately reacting, stop, pause and be, hmm, why do I feel this way? Right. Where is this showing? Because triggers are just reliving things that already happened to you. Like that's what a trigger is. It is triggering a memory or an emotion that was never fully processed through. And so we we have to go back to those moments and kind of uncover where the, it might take a couple times of you being triggered in order for you to figure out, oh, where the crap is this coming from? I know this might be a little much information, but I had sexual trauma when I was a when I was 12. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> and so when I got into a sexual relationship with my husband, there were certain things that would happen and just immediately I would be triggered. And I'm like, whoa, ho hold up. We have to stop. Something is wrong. I don't know what I'm feeling some kind of way. And I had to uncover exactly what that was. And when I uncovered it, now I can address it and either avoid that particular trigger or I can reparent myself in that moment and say, I'm OK. I am safe. This is not my abuser. This is my husband. My husband loves me. I am here. I am choosing this. This is not being done to me. I am choosing this. That's how reparenting starts. Would you say reparenting is fixing and identifying all those triggers? Because it seems to me like I'm trying to think this through. Would there be any other reason you're reparenting yourself other than you're being triggered by something in some area of your life? Um, repeat the question part of that. It was kind of broken no, no, no. up a little bit. I saw you had the bewilderment on your face, so I knew you didn't hear me. <laughs> so I said, um, so when we talk about reparenting, is it really just fixing all those triggers in our lives? Because I, I'm, I'm trying to imagine a scenario where you would need to reparent if there wasn't some trigger of something from your past. I would say that that falls into it. Reparenting does go back to those particular moments, but reparenting as a whole is not just fixing the individual triggers, but also developing new habits, new things. So a lot of the times what is missed within parenting is discipline. I'm not talking about beating the shit out of your kids. That's not discipline. That's right. punishment. That's not appropriate. When I talk about discipline, I mean, it's this idea that you have rules and structure and things that you must follow through and that discipline as a child now becomes a discipline as an adult. But there's this disconnect that if you do something wrong or incorrect as a child and you're just pulled up and slapped and some, and there's just this trigger and then you what? You shut down. You repeat this as an adult. So when something happens in your life and you make a mistake, you beat the shit out of yourself. Yes. You beat yourself up and you're not able to continue because now you're beating the shit up out of yourself and you're just sitting there in this self-punishment that now you have to learn. OK, let me be understanding. I have made a mistake. I have made it. This is a problem. I need to learn how to discipline myself as an adult. So a way to discipline yourself, have a time to go to bed. Set a set time to go to bed, wake up in the morning and go, I don't really want to make my bed, but I'm going to make my bed because that's part of discipline. That's part of doing the things that are hard because I need to or I have to. Sorry, you're smiling. <laughs> I'm a little excited. As you millennials like to say, adulting. <laughs> uh oh, I made her spit her coffee out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Yes, exactly. Adulting. Yes. Yeah, it, it's it's amazing how much of our lives are shaped by moments. And it's those little moments and sometimes it's big moments, but it's it's moments that but for that moment, we could have gone another direction in our life. And I, I think back on those things in my own life pretty often of, you know, had this not happened, then maybe things would have gone in that direction. But then what would happen? Of course, at the end of the day, I'm pretty damn proud of where I am in my life at this moment. I'm not regretting any of that. So reparenting isn't, well, if I could do it all over again, I would and, and have some different outcome. No, it's where you are now, being pleased and, and content with where you are now, shitty past or not, um, and then realizing where you have flaws. This is where you and I as best friends have come in handy because you pointed out some things to me I didn't see. I didn't even know. You weren't judgmental and I trust you to the end of the world um, and vice versa. I've said things to you and you're just like, Ah, uh, yeah, I do that, don't I? <laughs> it's just like you recognized it once I pointed it out and vice versa. So that's a fun part of this is wherever you are, if you're listening or watching this right now, uh, wherever you are, just know that where you are now is where you're supposed to be right now. And this reparenting is just restructuring in your mind how you got here and where you go from here. Yes, exactly. So a big part of reparenting and this is a very hard thing for me to throw at you so anybody that's listening this is hard this is a hard concept don't come at me okay it's really hard to get here and it's not easy 
you have to take responsibility for what happened to you. Hear me out. What happened to me when someone sexually abused me, I am not accountable for that. That is not my doing. I didn't do that. I'm not responsible for that. However, I am responsible for picking up the pieces and putting myself back together.